Okay, so this is a tutorial on the cranial nerves. So cranial nerves are nerves that emerge directly from the brain. Um, and you've got 12 pairs of cranial nerves. And they're a part of the peripheral nervous system. Um, so all 12 pairs are part of the peripheral nervous system except cranial nerve number 2, which actually emerges, um, which is kind of like an extension for, of the brain. So it's not technically a peripheral nerve. Um, so in this tutorial, we're going to go through the 12 uh, cranial nerves. We're going to look at where they originate from in the brain, and we'll talk a little bit about their function. So the cranial nerves have lots of different functions. You've got somatic and visceral components. They've got motor components, and there's um, some nerves which have special sensory components, so components to do with the special senses like smell, vision, hearing balance and taste. So if I just rotate the model of the brain round, you can see, so we're looking at the base of the brain and you can see all these um, nerves emerging from the brain. So the first two nerves actually emerge from the telencephalon and diencephalon, but the rest of the nerves, nerves 3 to 12, emerge from the brainstem. So that's the midbrain, the pons and the medulla. So the nerves are sort of numbered from 1 to 12, from kind of top to bottom, if you like. So I'm just going to run through a list of the nerves. So we've got the olfactory nerve, number 1, optic, ocular motor, trochlear, trigeminal, abducent, facial, vestibulocochlear, glossopharyngeal, vagus, accessory, and hypoglossal nerves. So They've got kind of strange names, but there is a mnemonic for remembering these. So I'll give you the clean version, which is O O O, to touch and feel very good velvet, ah heaven. So the dirty version is uh, what probably most people are taught, and it involves touching and feeling other things. So you can use your imagination there. So there's also a mnemonic for remembering the function um, of the cranial nerves. So this is, some say marry money, but my brother says big boobs matter more. So S is sensory, M, motor, B is both, so sensory and motor. So keep these mnemonics in mind when we go through the nerves. So we'll start with cranial nerve number one which is the olfactory nerve um, and this this nerve is responsible for the um, for olfaction so the sense of smell um, so there are receptors in the nasal cavity um, which pick up the sense of smell and um, the nerves pass um, through the nasal cavity up through the cribriform plate of the ethmoid bone and synapse on this um, uh, the olfactory bulb, so that you can see this projection um, along the base of the brain. So this is called the olfactory bulb, and the olfactory nerves synapse onto this olfactory bulb. So I've just switched over to this model, and you can see these little nerves coming up to synapse onto the olfactory bulb. So if we just take a quick look at the cribriform plate, we're looking at a um, side of the skull here. Um, so we're going to rotate the skull around and look at the interior of the skull. So we're looking uh, from a superior view at the inside of the skull. So this is the anterior part and um, the cribriform plate lies here. So it's not shown clearly here but the olfactory bulb runs along the cribriform plate and there are little holes in the cribriform plate called foramina where the olfactory nerves pass through. So if I just rotate the model around you can see these see these olfactory nerves passing up through the foramina to synapse onto the olfactory bulb. So next we've got the optic nerve and you can see these two nerves on either side, these big nerves coming here and you can see they cross at this area called the optic chiasm. So these nerves, uh, the optic nerve, nerve number two, is responsible for vision so it carries sensory information from the retina to the brain. So the third nerve is the oculomotor nerve. So now we're coming, this is the first nerve that originates from the brainstem. Um, so you can see its origin here. 
um, in the interpeduncular fossa. So you can see these two sort of pillars. These are called cerebral peduncles, and these are part of the midbrain. So the oculomotor nerve originates anteriorly um, on the midbrain in the floor of the interpeduncular fossa. So you can see the oculomotor nerve originating here. And this, this nerve is responsible um, for innervating muscles that move the eye, so extraocular muscles. And it also innervates the pupillary sphincter. So nerve number four is called the trochlear nerve. So if we just zoom in a little bit to the brainstem, and I'll just remove the cerebellum, and I'll remove the cerebral hemispheres. So it just makes things a little bit more clear. So we've just seen the oculomotor nerve here originating in the interpeduncular fossa. And if we follow the, uh, if we rotate the model around to look at the dorsal surface of the midbrain, we can see the trochlear nerves originating. So the trochlear nerve is another nerve which is involved with movements of the eye. So it only innervates one eye muscle called the superior oblique muscle. So it originates on the dorsal midbrain and it winds around um, the sides of the cerebral peduncles, so the lower margin of the cerebral peduncle. So next we've got the trigeminal nerve. So this, so you can see this big fat nerve coming off the side of the pons. Um, on the middle cerebellar peduncle. So this is the trigeminal nerve, so you can see it here originating laterally on the pons on the middle cerebellar peduncle. So the cerebellar peduncle is a bit which connects the pons to the um, cerebellum. So I'll just rotate around so you can see that a bit more clearly. So you can see the big trigeminal nerve coming off the side of the pons. Um, so this nerve is responsible for sensation from the face um, and if, if you just follow the nerve along you can see this big bulge so this is the trigeminal ganglion so this is um, a group of cell bodies of the sensory neurons um, and then it splits into three branches so if I just zoom in a bit you can see these three nerves coming off so you've got three branches of the trigeminal nerve you've got the ophthalmic, maxillary and mandibular nerves so that's just worth remembering. So as well as um, res uh, providing sensation from the face, the trigeminal nerve is responsible for the innervating the muscles of mastication. So if we just rotate the model around again, so we're looking anteriorly at the brainstem. Just follow the. Um, follow the brainstem down, we can see this nerve here originating at the border between the pons and the um, medulla. So this nerve is called the abducent nerve. And this is another muscle, um, sorry, nerve um, involved in innervating the extraocular muscles of the eye. So it innervates one muscle of the eye called the lateral rectus muscle. So we've now talked about three muscles, sorry, three nerves responsible for innervating extraocular oculomotor nerve, the trochlear nerve, and now the abducent nerve. So this originates at the border between the pons and the medulla. So if we just rotate the model again, looking laterally, if we follow follow the brainstem laterally, we've got two nerves here, um, and this part of the brainstem is called the cerebellopontine angle. So just above the olive of the medulla, you've got this nerve here called the facial nerve. So this originates um, at the cerebellopontine angle above the olive, and it's responsible for muscles of facial expression, and it receives taste from the anterior two-thirds of the tongue. And it also has secretomotor function to the salivary glands and the lacrimal gland. So just lateral to this nerve, we've got the vestibulocochlear nerve, which also originates in the cerebellopontine angle. Um, and this nerve is responsible for hearing and balance. So it has two branches. The vestibular part is responsible for balance, and the cochlear part is responsible for hearing. And then just below it, we've got this nerve here, which is called the glossopharyngeal nerve. And this um, originates 
just dorsal to the olive so you can see its position here just behind the olive um, on the lateral margin of the medulla so this nerve uh, is responsible for taste from the posterior third of the tongue um, so remember the the facial nerve was responsible for taste from the anterior two-thirds the glossopharyngeal nerve is responsible for, for taste from the posterior third so it's responsible for taste and it's got this secretomotor function to the parotid gland and it was also um, responsible for innovating muscles in the throat and carrying sensation um, from various areas in the throat so that's nerve number nine the glossopharyngeal nerve and nerve number ten originates just below it and this is the vagus nerve so this originates in the posterolateral sulcus of the medulla so just behind the olive and just below the um, just below where the glossopharyngeal nerve originates so the vagus nerve um, innovates lots of laryngeal and pharyngeal muscle and it innovates a, uh, almost all of the abdominal and thoracic viscera so next we've got the accessory nerve so this is nerve number 11 and this nerve has cranial and spinal roots so it's got um, so this is this nerve here it isn't shown sort of it's not best illustrated by this model but you can see it's sort of it's got a lower origin and an upper origin so it's got a cranial and um, spinal root so this muscle is responsible for innovating the sternocleidomastoid and the trapezius muscles and finally we've got the twelfth nerve so this is the hypoglossal nerve so you can see it here so this sits between the pyramids of the medulla so these are the medullary pyramids and it sits between these pyramids and the olive so you can see that here the hypoglossal nerve and this nerve is responsible for um, innovating the, uh, the muscles of the tongue so those are the the 12 cranial nerves um, you've got mnemonics for remembering them and you've seen sort of where they originate on the brain stem in the and the brain